My name's Eric Stewart. I was born and raised right here on top of Newman Street in Hancock County. And I've been here ever since. And my biggest work I've done is farming and coopering. I've done really more coopering than I have farming. So I'm still working at the cooper business. I make churns, stuffs, bread trays, piggins, buckets, forks, spoons, salad bowls, just most anything anyone wants made out of wood, I make it. But I'm going to soon have to quit, for my ages are getting against me, and the time's passing off and leaving me. But uh, I've been pretty lucky in it. I've raised, uh, I've raised nine children grown, and I've been married 60 years, and I've been pretty lucky in that line. So it makes me feel good to think about it. I've worked all the time at the cooper business when I wasn't on the farm work and could work all the time at the cooking business if I'd left off the farming, but I have, I just like to farm, and I'll, I'd put part of my time in on farming. And my grandfather's name was Boyd Stewart. He come from England, moved in here, and he, he was a cooper. That's all he ever followed. He made churns, wheels, bucket loom, just everything that could be made out of wood in the way of, uh, of uh, a living. And, uh, well, my father, he took it, he learned it and took it up from him. And he worked at it as long as he was able. And when he passed away, I took it up, and so I've, I've followed it now for about uh, 50 years. My father, he worked at it till he was 74 years old. And uh, so I'm 80, 83 now, will be running just in a day or two. And I'm going to soon have to lay it down. And I'd be glad that someone would come around and take it up. But I can't get no one interested in it, it seems like, and so I don't... I, I don't know whether I'll ever get anyone to start to trade up or not. Now, when my grandfather come in here, he bought him a farm on Newman's Ridge here because it was well timbered. He didn't buy it just for the land. He bought it for the timber in order to get it to make all this stuff out of. And he never did farm any much himself. He just worked, worked his timber all the time. And uh, he, he made just anything most out of wood that people wanted. Well, now I'm getting in the timber. The big spot I get now, it comes from around right here, pretty close to home, not too far away. But now it takes first class choice timber to do this. You take knotty timber and you can't do nothing with it. it it's no good. It takes timber that's straight with the grain and no knots in it. Well, now I'm working this timber. It's sawed up in blocks, just the length that I want my vessel out of. I let it season the rest smart little bit in the, in the bolt. I call it the bolt. And after it seasons a while in the bolt, then I take my fro and drive it out in slats, small slats, about an inch thick. Well, after I get that done, then I put it on my shaving horse and take my drawer knife and I work it down to about three quarters of an inch to, to a stave, just the way I want it. And I'll dress them down to the right size, and then I'll let it lay and season again. It's got to be well seasoned so it won't never shrink. After I get the vessel made, it'll stay just like I made it. But if it ain't swell seasoned, well, it'll fall down on you if you ain't careful. The way I work them stays when I get ready to build it, I've got a jointer that I run it on and a gauge to go by uh, that I joint it. If, uh, if one, end's got to, one end of that stave has got to be something like a quarter of an inch narrower than the, than the other. Well, if you've got to get the right kind of slope on that before you can make a vessel that will hold water. Well, I put that on that jointer, and I, I, I run it down there until my, until my gauge, till it fits my gauge. And after it fits the gauge, then, well, I can put it together, and it'll hold water. And that's the, just, that's the way I do all my vessels. The bigger the vessel is, the less slope I've got to take on my, on my stave. But the smaller the vessel is, the more slope it requires. When I'm putting my churn together, I've got a, I've got a sack that I put together with. That sounds funny, but that's right. One for that sack, it'd be a job to put that churn together, or, or, or tub, or barrel, or whatever you're making. It holds it to you to place your staves right where you want them. And you put, the, you put it in there, and you get it plumb around, and the last stave goes in now, it fits tight, where you just have two hooks on it to hold it, to put it up to, with. And the last stave goes in, it fits awful tight. Well, when you get it tight, you, you take your sack out, and you even up your staves then all the way around it, shape it up on the inside, and I've got a crow's then that I cut the, a ring around on the inside for the head to go in. It's got to be perfect around, but if my bar, my churn or whatever I'm making ain't just exactly right, 
When I get that head made and put in it, his perfect round head draws it, it makes it perfect. After I get that done, then I've got to go ahead and make me another set of hoops and, and dress that barrel down, or barrel down or churn down or bucket, whatever it is, dress it down to where that it will fit and be smooth and uh, nice. And uh, then after I get that done, then I go to the inside of it with what's called a round shave. And it smooths it up just as smooth as the outside, if not smoother. And so when I get that done, I've got a very nice vessel. Then I get that all done, I make the lid then, out of, out of, make the dasher out of cedar, and the stick maybe out of a hickory or maple, and the lid out of cedar. It's all cedar except the stick and the, and the bands. The bands is white oak. I have to make them out of white oak. Cedar won't make bands. It's too brash. Well, uh, I get that completed then. Why, there's always somebody standing there looking for it. I don't have no trouble of getting rid of them. And that's just the same way now I build my buckets and my tubs and, uh, and, my, and butter presses and, uh, and butter bowls. But my salad bowls now I build, I cut them out there solid. I, I work them out all in one piece. I made my turning lay out and out that I use. And I've been using it for over... Sixty years. I used it quite before, a lot before ever I married. And I've been married sixty years. And I made every tool that I need to work with it myself in the shop. And I made all my tools except a handsaw, a brace and bit. And I couldn't, I couldn't say just how many tools, different kinds of tools I've got. So I, I run my turn lay by foot power. I run it with my foot. Lots of folks will come and look at it and they say, well, said, what is this? I say, it's my turn and lay. Well, they said, where's your power at? I say, it's in my foot. I can do better turning with it than I can with, with a regular power. I, I tried power a while, a while, but I couldn't do the work with it that I can with my foot. It's over 60 years old and in good shape yet. Now, when it goes to come to my tools to build these churns, buckets, tubs and one thing or another like that. I made them, but my crows that I put the head in hits a half circle. Just like you take a compass and lay you off a round circle, you cover saw that right in two. Well I make me a, I made me a bit and put an out edge of it so I could adjust it and cut the cut as deep as I wanted to into the stave and uh, and uh, cut it perfectly round. And I could adjust it like uh, I could cut a groove in it from a pint on up to a 50 bushel barrel. And uh, my chisels now that I work with on that, you, here they're a great big kind of a chisel. I made them, they're, they're broad, about three inches wide. I take them and I smooth up the inside with them all around that, uh, all around with it. And then uh, after I get that done, then I'll go to putting the hooks to it and build it up. And uh, it's a very smart little job to uh, do all that, but. I still work at it. And the tools now that I've made of every one except my hand saws, brace and bits, use no nails, whatever, and no glue or nothing. If I've got to use a nail and something other, I just throw it away. Well, now I'm making all these these vessels. I'd get maybe a dozen of them started. Never hardly start one and complete it, just as long as I had a hold of it, I'd come on and lay down, start another. And then after I got so many piled up that way, I'd get go down. I'd go back and I'd pick up one. And I'd finish it. Well, making them uh, bread trays, maybe I'd get one out, dig it out, down just about where I wanted to shape it up, and maybe it set for maybe three or four weeks. Then before I'd finish it, I'd be working at something else. And that's just the way now I've got along with the cooper business. I hardly ever finish a piece when I start to make it, till for maybe for quite a while. And it's, uh, it helps it to do that. If you get timber hay pretty well seasoned on most of the stuff, why, well, it's not so good. But if your timber is well seasoned, I give it a chance to season out and to make real good stuff. Well, now I'm building my churns. After I get my staved out and everything, I can build one a day. But to start from the, from the don't say this, start from the stump now to building it and getting it there, it, it takes me around two days to build a churn. And uh, I can build a bucket in a day, or I can build a pig in a day, 
I can make a butter bowl a day, and I can make a butter press in a day, and that's just uh, about all I can do on that line. And uh, it's uh, pretty complicated. If you don't just get it right, you just ain't done no good. <laughs> 